How about that weather out there? Nice and warm, am I right? I think if you look on the, the temperature gauge, it's over 100 by far, and it's going to be close to 110 degrees this weekend, so watch out for that. Now, the hot spell, as you know, it's lasted here a few weeks now, and I'm sure during that time, someone in your life has probably made a joke or a comment about climate change and the heat we're all experiencing, of course. Now, the scientific community, they agree. Evidence shows that human activity is impacting the planet's climate overwhelmingly. And any time, though, you bring up climate change or the human impacts on the planet, there will be those that speak up and say it's untrue. Science and data, they show otherwise, but some people, they say, they just don't buy the climate change facts. Well, have you ever wondered why there are skeptics of climate change, and why do the skeptics believe what they do? Well, two, research at the, two researchers, I should say, at the University of Idaho, they dove into the world of climate change skepticism, and they researched why people are skeptical about climate change and where those beliefs come from. They also set out to find if people are firm in their opinions on climate change or open to changing those opinions. It's an interesting conversation we want to show you here on the 208. Climate change and the human impact of that can be a divisive topic. Although the scientific community agrees overwhelmingly that human activity is impacting dangerous climate change, there will always be skeptics. University of Idaho researchers Dilshani Sarathsandra and Kristen Haltener interviewed climate change skeptics across the Northwest to find out more about their beliefs. The pair found three main reasons for the skepticism on climate change. The first, conspiracy theories. People have this perception that uh, some international body is seeking to uh, acquire money and power through climate change. A second grounding is in religion, a uh, perspective that God created Earth for us to use and therefore wouldn't, wouldn't make it possible for us to ruin God's creation. And or humans are arrogant to even think we could influence. God's creation. Uh, and then a third group of people really had a distrust in science. They perceived scientific research as bias in bias towards believing in climate change, um, having incentives that might sway scientists. The duo approaches the topic of discussing climate change from different perspectives. Dilshani grew up in Sri Lanka, where she witnessed health issues and poverty associated with pollution and rising temperatures. I thought a lot about how climate change impacts are putting significant burdens on people in the global south, especially small island nations. So I had a personal interest in the topic, plus my research is driven by the interest in public attitudes towards controversial science topics such as climate change. Kristen took a wide view of the world as she had her first child. She worries about the planet's health for her son's generation. I started to have a lot of climate anxiety and uh, I was talking to, to Dilshani about it and about sort of where I come from in, in terms of my research and where she comes from in hers. And we decided to put our, anxi our climate anxiety uh, into action with this project. The pair found that some people were deeply committed to their skepticism and position on climate change. Others were not as firm and open to discussion. People who are skeptical about climate change are not necessarily anti-environmental. We found that there's a lot of overlap and concern about three specific areas. One is pollution. Uh, a direct, direct quote from someone we interviewed was, no one wants to breathe polluted air. Habitat destruction and loss. Uh, people are concerned about losing animal species, especially people who are hunters or hikers. Um, and then a third is actually support for renewable energy. We found that half the people we surveyed supported expansion of solar and wind energy. The matter of perspective is a big takeaway from the interviews and surveys that the pair did with skeptics. The point can also be echoed by the authors who have a book set to be published on this topic next year. In the sense that this duo together, they come from different experiences, but they have a shared perspective. We grew up in such different environments, she in the United States and me in Sri Lanka, but we care about an issue that is really affecting everyone at a global level. So coming together from those different perspectives and working on a project together, really our book is like a culmination of years of work. So we are very excited about that. A major takeaway of the in-depth research and reports is that some climate skeptics are willing to talk and change their opinion. A key to that though, is finding common ground. A lot of the conversations about climate change to be effective can start from places of shared common, common ground, 
So perhaps, a hunt, you know, being hunters or being hikers or enjoying the outdoors or being grandparents and worrying about the futures of your grandchildren, right? There's a, there is a lot of common ground that we can begin these conversations from uh, to, to sort of identify what we care about in a mutual way uh, that can drive policy. And that interview and segment is just a small taste of the research and a preview of the book that they're working on for next year. It'll be out next year, and we'll keep you posted on that. But to learn more uh, about their work and really what they're talking about and more of the inside and the in-depth analysis, we're going to have a link to that in this story at ktvb.com. Highly uh, recommend reading it. I thought it was really fascinating going through it earlier today.